Hey everyone, as you can see, there's a different background behind me because we are in the middle of moving. That is going to take a while and because of that, the videos are also not going to be necessarily on schedule. Sorry about that, but hey, I'm, I'm trying to work with, uh, with what I have here. But yeah, with that, let's jump into the video. Let's talk about constraints and why they are good for your design process. Coming from industrial design, it makes total sense that you are not going to design a product in a vacuum. From deadlines, budgets, all the way to brand guidelines, there are many constraints on the design process. One would think that constraints are always bad because they inhibit the creativity and free exploration of ideas, but these constraints provide a clear set of guidelines and limitations that can help the design process and they can actually lead to more creative ideas and concepts. Let's take a look at some of the constraints and why they are good. When I was studying industrial design, we were trying to be as user-centered as possible. After all, each product you design is meant to be used by someone. So when you design a hand dryer, it has to be light enough to be held in one hand and easily maneuverable. When designing a sci-fi prop, you can use this constraint to check your prop as well. Is the chair high or low enough that you're putting into a room? Is the handle of a sci-fi gun positioned in a way that it is comfortable for the user? These objects might not be used like you use them in real life, but our subconscious still does pick up on the parts of them that are a little bit off. What is the function of your design? There is a saying that industrial designers love to use, form follows function. Look at heavy industrial machines, they are not streamlined or made to be pretty, they are functional. Handles, tough materials, no forced symmetry. Stuff like this really evokes function and you can bring this into your designs as well. Deadlines and budget restrictions make you be very deliberate with your time and how you are going to use it. You have to plan how much time you invest into research, ideation, prototyping and testing before you get to production. This speeds up and streamlines the whole process. Brand guidelines cut down on unnecessary research time. You don't need to come up with color schemes and fonts because that is already established. In concept art, we might not have brand guidelines, but we have previously established IPs that we can follow. Or an example of this type of constraint that you probably already used are mood boards. You want to achieve a specific look for your design, so you create a mood board of drawings and paintings that you like and want to follow. So what did we learn? Constraints help you with making your drawings more focused and believable, getting done on time and sticking to a visual identity. The above mentioned constraints were a couple of examples, but there is no specific list of constraints. You can create your own constraints based on what you need for your current project. So let us implement some constraints for today's drawing and sneakily create a challenge since we haven't done one of those in a while. But first, a word from our sponsor. Who's a good sponsor? Bianca is a good sponsor. Are you a good sponsor? Yes? Yeah. Here's the camera. Are you a good sponsor? Who are you a good sponsor? Bianca, you Oh, ah! Yeah. Uh. So, I want to draw a Mac. What constraints should I create for it? Instead of brand guidelines, I will do a bit of world creation. Let's create a nice big map. Yeah, something like this. Okay, now that we have the map, let us put some mountains, forests, maybe rivers on it. Okay, this map is pretty nice, but it will not help us if there is no one living there. So let us establish a country, let's say Altovia, with a couple of bigger cities, some towns and villages. And now the meat of the matter, the conflict. Altovia is a resource-rich country and their neighbors, the Drovani Republic, has decided to invade. And while Altovians are brave and formidable people, they are in much lower numbers than the Drovani. So, after some skirmishes, the country falls to the enemy, which quickly establishes control over the major cities and even builds an occupation base on Alto Volcano. But resistance fighters started popping up all over the country, making the life of the occupiers harder. These were rapid insurgency strike teams that had their base mostly in the impenetrable mountain caves. And our mech is part of a team that is hiding in such a base. Okay, now that we have a world to design into, let's put some more constraints on our mech. The mech should be around two or three times human size, 
small enough to fit on the back of a small Japanese type pickup truck, humanoid shape with arms and legs so it can use close combat and also long distance weaponry and be relatively nimble and fast on its own as well. And to force myself to be done in time, I am allowing myself only three ideation sketches and one finalized sketch. We shall not focus on the actual sketching part in this video, uh, since you have seen that many times before and if you haven't, I recommend that you check some of my videos out. I'll leave some links in the description below. But if you are very curious about the sketching process, I will upload a full video of that to my Patreon so you can check that one out. I want you to focus on the fact that having set up the restrictions makes the design process easier and faster. Yeah, only three ideation sketches might be a bit few, but because I have a good idea in what world my robot exists, what I need it to do, how it interacts with the world and how people interact with it, I can limit the number of shapes and sizes I have to explore for my mech without necessarily losing out on ideas. And as I said in previous videos as well, these points I make here are not set in stone. Feel free to apply them or mix them as you see fit, whatever works for your situation. These are just some guidelines I picked up during my journey and might help you in your design process as well. All right, now before we get to the end of the video, I set this whole world up with a challenge in mind. I want to create a sort of diorama a secret base for freedom fighters. In this diorama, we will have the following main elements, environment, characters, and props and vehicles. I want this challenge to feel like a collaboration so you can pick between uh, these um, elements, so character, environment, or props and vehicles, but you don't get to choose what you design there. I will give you a list and I will choose who designs what. In the end, I am going to draw a diorama where I am going to incorporate all of your designs. Now, if we have too many people, which I doubt, I'm going to pick a winner for each prop and each thing that we're drawing, for each prop and character, and use their design for the diorama. I'm trying to get some concept character artists to help me with judging and some feedback on your work as well. No promises just yet, but I am working on things. So sign up, deadline and more information you will find in the uh, challenge channel on our Discord server and also some description. I will, I will do a community post here as well. I hope you will join this challenge and that uh, we will have a great time. And if you see this video at any other time, so later after the challenge is done, why not uh, just do the challenge for yourself and draw one or several of these elements just for yourself to see how it works. With that, we have come to the end of this video where I want to thank you for watching it and hope you enjoy and learn something from it. As always, if you have comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. I always read them and try to reply. I want to thank my lovely patrons for their support, which means a lot to me. But as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time. Keep on sketching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.